Welcome to the Simply Vegan podcast brought to you by the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine. If you're new to the podcast, I'm the magazine editor, Holly Johnson, and my co-host, Molly Pickering, is our digital executive. We've both been vegan around five years and love bringing you all the latest news, reviews, and vegan chat every week. Today is the fourth and final episode in our cookery series, and I'm pleased to say we are joined by Katie Beskow. She couldn't join us last week because she had COVID and, um, you know, wasn't feeling too good at all. So um, I hope you enjoy today's episode. It's packed with tips on barbecue food, summer entertaining, and how to just kind of speed things up in the kitchen, make life super easy for us all. How are you feeling better, Katie? I am, thank you. After a, a long episode of COVID, I am, thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Yes, we're so pleased that you're okay and you're able to join us today. We're going to be talking about time-saving tips and barbecue ideas, aren't we? So should we start by talking about your new, new book, Vegan Barbecue? Yeah, so uh, my new book came out last month, Vegan Barbecue. Uh, it was so much fun to write last year. And as a food writer, often the things that I write aren't done in season. But luckily, this book I was able to do in summer. So it was it was really <laughs> lovely to feel immersed in that experience of summer rather than writing Christmas recipes like I am now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's something so wrong about that. It just needs to be, I don't know, it needs to be addressed, doesn't it? Because we're starting to cover Christmas stuff and, you know, it's July, August. It's like, no. <laughs> that's what my week has been this week it's just writing up supermarket Christmas releases and it's just like do I feel festive is should I feel guilty for feeling festive like what's going on very surreal but it's really lovely to see your book and kind of bring me back to summer I love that yeah, it's such a nice one for summer entertaining because um you know even sort of September and even like October you get nice weather don't you now so not that that's necessarily a good thing because it might be <laughs> climate change related but you know we won't won't go into that right now so tell us about some of the recipes in there yeah just just a touch on that as well I think barbecue is full year round I've been known to have my barbecue out in winter and make a really nice sweet potato chili on the barbecue when it's Mm. when it's a bit cooler so and I think as well you know things like bonfire night you can really get out there and there's just an occasion around barbecuing um so don't just do it in summer just feel free to be British and get out with your umbrella if you want want to do that definitely when it's cold you'll make some great things and that you know that smoky scent that you get and everything you can't beat it Uh, yeah so in this book there's there's lots of different recipes from everything you can make on the grill to sides and sweets and some you know extra bits like you can eat outside yeah so that there's plenty of things in there suitable for everyone and I think as well it's not just for vegans it's you know you don't have to make two lots of of different products that are barbecue uh you know for, for your meat eating friends and, and your vegans you can just all eat it together I don't think you're going to miss out on anything yeah exactly and it's just so nice to you know when you sometimes think of vegan barbecue you think oh okay I'll go to Aldi or Tesco's and get some vegan burgers and mm-hmm. or I might do a green salad and actually there's so much more that you can do definitely yeah so much more you can do from paellas to lots of you know cauliflower dishes and marinades there's plenty you can do and actually it works out a lot cheaper than going and buying your processed meats your processed vegan meats completely I think we had a barbecue not too long ago and it was sort of like it's a big old barbecue I think we had about 18 people over and we got um like burgers and sausages and stuff and I think we ended up paying this is at Aldi. I think it was like eighteen pounds for just burgers to ensure that like everyone had one because it's like two pounds for like two burgers. Whereas you could sort of, I don't know, two pounds could get you probably a lot more veg, and then you could serve more people. And I just love barbecued veg. I think there's something so good about it, and it just goes so smoky. And I'm so excited to try all the recipes in this book. They look insane. <laughs> you do get really great layers of, of flavour uh, mm. through the vegetables that like you just don't get when you cook them in an oven or on a on a grill or a pan. Just you know all that lovely charcoal flavour. Mm. I think you can't you can't beat it, can you? No, not at all. What are some of the flavours you can add to grilled veg then? Say you're going to do like skewers or something. Would you use a marinade or like a rub, like a, a sort of herb rub? Yeah, I mean, I love using yogurt, so non-dairy yogurt and getting some flavours. You can put harissa in there mm. or some lovely curry powders, curry paste, just packing all the flavours. You know, anything that you would cook in the in the kitchen, you can do on the grill as well. Yeah. 
And one of the recipes includes watermelon, doesn't it? And I keep seeing this everywhere. Like, I don't know, on Instagram and in re- on like on restaurant menus. My friend sent me a picture and I think she had like a watermelon and vegan feta salad in a in a pub somewhere. So, yeah, it seems to be a bit of a craze. What's the, the trick to cooking watermelon? <laughs> so I came across this by accident. I love watermelon. Um, I put it on the grill to see as a dessert to see what it'd yeah. be like. But actually, the texture completely changes. And it actually, I asked a friend who who eats meat and fish, and they said it, it's got kind of a salmon texture. It kind of firms up, so it loses that iciness that you expect when you bite into it, and it yeah. does meaty, which works so well. I've done a Thai green curry with it. You can do it all on the grill. Obviously, you'll need you'll need a heat proof pan. Don't put the curry <laughs> through the grill. <laughs> but yeah, as you're grilling the the watermelon, the texture changes it is really delicious worth trying amazing I made some um I think I sent you the reel that I made Holly the um vegan watermelon tuna um I don't know why I have whenever I say recipes I have to put vegan and like just explain (laughs) it all thoroughly but we all know it's vegan but anyway um yeah so it's like tuna watermelon steak sort of situation and when you bake it as you say it kind of loses that um like I see texture and then it goes like really fleshy and it might sound a bit weird but it's just so good and then you marinate it for ages and then it sears so beautifully it's so nice and I went to a restaurant not too long ago actually for my birthday and I had vodka watermelon and salt and it was just so nice so simple but just so delicious love it yeah I'm going camping next week so I'm going to take a watermelon and um, try and impress some of the meat eaters in the group. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and it'll be so much cheaper than buying vegan meats as well, yeah, you know, exactly. to, to get that meaty flavour. I reckon you could probably serve that as, as part of something and people probably wouldn't suspect it was watermelon. Wow. Mm. Give it a go. Yeah. Surprise them. Still blows my mind. <laughs> um, what about tofu then? Give us some tips for cooking tofu um, on the barbecue or just in general, because it's, you know, it's such a versatile ingredient, isn't it? It is. I've been a vegan for 16 years and I spent most of those years hating tofu. And now I love it. And it wasn't <laughs> something that happened overnight. It was something that actually when I learned how to cook it properly. And actually, I'm really impatient in the kitchen. Hence, a lot of my books are around quick recipes. <laughs> but I, I don't want to be pressing things for hours. So I like, you know, the pre-pressed tofu. It's just mm. it's just life changing. Um, so, yeah, if you're grilling tofu, obviously you want to get some oil on there. If it's not pre-pressed, do press it so you get a really nice fan texture bit of oil you don't want it over a completely direct heat so let your coals just go a bit ashy first maybe move some of the coals to the side you're working over indirect heat just so it doesn't burn too much you'll still get that nice grill mark on there as you probably know not all wine is vegan but it can be really hard to tell what is or isn't vegan friendly when you're staring at the supermarket shelves that's where virgin wines comes in The award-winning online retailer has over 400 vegan certified wines on their books. And the best bit is they are made by independent vineyards and winemakers from around the world. These talented winemakers work in partnership with Virgin Wines to create exclusive handcrafted and often organic wines that you won't find anywhere else. Whether it's red, white, rosé or sparkling you're after, it's easy to set your preference on the website to vegan so that every wine you see is suitable to buy. Vegan Food and Living listeners can take advantage of a super offer with 50% off their first vegan case, which is the perfect way to get started. To claim the offer, visit www.virginwines.co.uk forward slash vegan FL. Get it grilling. What I like to do is then dip it at the grill side. You can have a little setup of trays, um, dip it in some wasabi mayo and some breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs, and you can make a katsu burger from there. Um, mm. So it starts out just being a piece of, you know, a slice of tofu and you can actually turn it into something really beautiful. Yeah, I always that think just, so stick nice. it on a, just tend <laughs> to stick it on a skewer and it's just a little bit boring. So, yeah, I need to experiment a bit more. <laughs> and of course, use it in your desserts. For uh, I, I love uh, like a smoked salt and chocolate mousse as a dessert. So you can make that in your kitchen, keep it chilled and bring it out. And of course, using silken tofu there. So it's another way to to enjoy tofu yeah. over summer. 
Lovely. Yeah, you were experimenting with silk and tofu, weren't you, Molly? Using it in sauces and things. Yeah, it's a revolution. I made a key lime pie and it just changed the game completely. It's so good. And I think I made some um, like a tzatziki with it, but just kind of obviously blending it up loads. So it just goes so creamy. It's so versatile. And I think people look at it and they get a bit scared because of the texture and it obviously doesn't have much flavour, but it's just so much you can do with it. Mm. Complete game changer. I've started using it to make um, scrambled tofu because it's just a mm. bit sort of more, it sounds gross, a bit more runny. <laughs> no, <laughs> it definitely <laughs> does. I prefer using silicon tofu for um, like tofu scramble. I think it kind of has more of a eggy texture. As much as I love sort of like traditional scrambled tofu, I think if you want sort of like that classic scrambled egg on toast or whatever, it's very good for that. Yeah. It's quite hotel style, isn't it? It's like soft yeah. scrambled. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I'm definitely a fan of that. So you're known for your fast and easy recipes, like you're saying, Katie, and you're not interested in spending all day in the kitchen. So how can we throw a great barbecue without, you know, taking up loads of time, loads of prep? Yeah, I mean, you do need to have a little bit of prep, but you don't need to be spending all your time in the kitchen. Make life easy for yourself. Uh, you know, if it's a new recipe, maybe give it a test first. Um, use things like canned jackfruit. Obviously, you can get some great textures. I've got like some no lobster rolls in there that give you that classic. I was looking at those texture. yesterday. They look <laughs> so good. I'm going to try those. <laughs> they're really good. And obviously, the radish in there gives it that nice pink mm. texture and that crunch. Yeah, they're really, really good. So I think just, just cheat a little bit as well. It's, it's okay to use curry pastes and, and different flavourings like that. So you don't have to stand and make everything from scratch. Nobody does that. You can add a few <laughs> things in. Work with flavours. And of course, with barbecuing, use good quality. I like lump wood charcoal. It's going to give you the best flavour from there. And as well, it, it gets hot nice and quick. So just let it cool, let all the ash settle and you'll find it naturally cools down. So if you're making something like a paella, it's perfect because it heats it quickly and then allows it to cool properly as it should be. Okay. Mm. What um you said about curry paste. What other cheat ingredients do you sort of recommend? Harissa's great. Any sort of flavorings like that, or even like a jack seasoning blend, you know, in the powders and the packs. Yeah. Um, they're great. You can add that in with cauliflower and like a jack, cauliflower steak. Uh, if you don't mind me calling it a steak, I know some people take issue with cauliflower <laughs> steaks. <laughs> a slice of tofu that's got jack on it. Um, but you know, lots of different things that, you know, pre made um, mixtures and seasonings. Um, yeah, just, just get it all in there. It saves you blending lots of different seasonings like that. Fresh herbs are great as well. You know, you can buy them in packs and supermarkets. It, blend them together mix them chop them and you, you've got something that tastes fantastic with a little effort I think as well using something like fresh lemons and limes it's a really easy thing to do but it just transforms it lifts the dish so worst case scenario fresh herbs squeeze a lemon job done you're done <laughs> yeah keep it simple yeah and just a bit of garlic or something that always um transforms the, things like the three garlic onion and lemon like <laughs> my favorite <laughs> I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and actually the, the mm. simple, you know, I love flavour, I love dishes, lots of flavour, but actually you don't need to add loads of ingredients in to get that. It's about the freshness, using ingredients in season as well. You get the best flavour from those actual ingredients rather than, you know, eating strawberries in January. They don't taste much, let's face it. You know, you better wait for those for the yeah. summer. I think eating seasonally, it does give you better flavours. Yeah, I think the Italians have nailed it, haven't they, with simple cooking. It's just... <laughs> But um, yeah, my daughter's not a fan. I did her like a, I think it was a lemon and garlic um, pasta dish the other day. And she was like, it's quite plain. And she's sort of chucking loads of chilli in. But I think you sort of get used to it, don't you? Um, do you think, so a lot a lot of your recipes are, are really quick. Do you, do you think it's sort of quite um, realistic to create meals and just, I mean, one of your books was 15 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, and that includes the chopping time as well. I very rarely spend any longer than I mean, I've spent most of my day in the kitchen because it's my job, but I very don't spend very long cooking my own my own dinner. And and actually I think realistically, let's face it, not many of us have that long to spend in the kitchen. Yeah. It's a luxury, I think, if if you don't if I'm not doing something where it's only taking me 15 minutes on, you know, at the hob doing it like that, it'll be something I can throw in the oven, get in a roasting mm -hmm. pan, throw in the oven, walk away, do better things. Yeah, I think it's totally realistic. And I think, you know, there's 
lots of tips and tricks, things around the kitchen that you can do to make it easier, cheat ingredients, like we're saying, the hair mixes, the spice mixes, making sure your knives are sharp, that sort of thing. Um, and versatile ingredients as well. You know, spinach, for example, you can eat it raw in a salad. It's nice, easy. You don't have to do anything to it. You can add it into a curry. It makes a delicious base for that. Just thinking a little bit outside the box and, and making life easy for yourself. Yeah, we're all for that, definitely. <laughs> all for that, definitely. <laughs> Are you quick with everything in your life? Because you talk quite quickly as well. I'm just imagining you like literally <laughs> running around like with 10 jobs at once. I think so, possibly. <laughs> good to slow it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit like that, to be honest. Um, so if Molly and I were coming around for dinner, what would you cook for us? Oh, it's a, it's a good question. I would probably do. I love sort of if you have people around to have a nice big sharing table. Mm, so me can too. All in. So I think something like a really nice butternut squash tagine with apricots on the top, mm. lots of lemon, lots of salt, lots of herbs, really delicious, spicy, gorgeous. Some tabbouleh, again, lots of nice fresh lemon on there. Homemade flatbreads. Rose when can water. we come round? When are yeah, we coming sure. round? When is I'll get it in now. <laughs> please that sounds love- like my dream food <laughs> I love it I think you know it's just great having people around and just you can just get tucked in it's relaxed it's what food is about for me it's not about sitting with a, a small portion as you can tell you know that sort of stuffiness around food it's just about getting tucked in it's there's something lovely about someone putting a pot of food on the table and you can all tuck in yeah. it's definitely just, it's hearty food <laughs> it sort of like brings you all together and it's kind of got like a community spirit to it and I think food is such like a wonderful tool for that definitely it's something I think we all share don't we and Mm -hmm. if we can just enjoy it take the lid off that and all enjoy the smell and the food yeah Yeah. it's just wonderful it's a great thing to do and I'm looking forward to having you around (laughs) (laughs) me too (laughs) and also less dishes if you're sort of all just sharing off like well I know you'd have individual plates but all just tucking in off one plate less dishes and that's good with me yeah definitely who has the time to do all that washing up (laughs) me not me (laughs) You mentioned tabbouleh. I'm I'm terrible at cooking grains. I always seem to mess it up. Is it a case of just very carefully following the packet instructions? Because I just, whatever I'm cooking, it seems to be either waterlogged or, you know. Sometimes... It's hard. It's yeah. really hard. You've got to get the knack to it. It's it's a real it's a it's a skill, isn't it? I think you know with <laughs> with um with tabbouleh when I'm doing bulgur wheat, all it is for me is you know a, a bigger bowl. Um, the bulgur wheat in the bottom and pour over enough boiling water just to cover it and unlike couscous which takes minutes just to steam you're going to want a good 20-25 minutes for bulgur wheat so I just put a plate over the top forget about it chop all your herbs you know while that's doing that do all your other stuff and then go back to it and just fork through it and it'll be nice and fluffy at that point don't over complicate it do you not put it on a saucepan then do you not no Oh, okay. That's interesting because yeah. that's what I do. And similar to what you said, Holly, it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes I'll have it great. And then the other times it'll sort of either be stuck to the pan or it'll just be like, oh, I don't even know what it is. Just <laughs> really, yeah, like <laughs> porridge almost. Just yeah. not good. So I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, because- try that just as you would with couscous, just, just yeah. the boiling water and just, just enough enough to cover it you don't need any more than that and then just cover it 20 minutes 25 minutes for a bit longer okay yeah cool yeah you can always add more water if needed but it's you can't take it away can you so less is more definitely I might try that for my camping trip then (laughs) great one to do for camping yeah Yeah. where are you going camping I'm going to Cornwall oh (laughs) I love that (laughs) yeah we're going with friends and um my so the friends that I'm going with I met about three years ago and she wasn't vegan at all and didn't really you know like me back sort of five years ago never thought she would and just through um sort of me cooking things and you know her enjoying it she's gone pretty much fully plant-based which is amazing so we get really excited we take all our like Riverford leftover veg from our you know our fridges and get down and, <laughs> and just sit with a glass of wine chopping things up going oh what could we do with this beetroot or <laughs> oh that's so nice yeah it's just really nice and creative isn't it it's sort of um you know have to think outside the box with veg that's what I was going to ask how did you get into vegan cooking 
Uh, by accident, really, just by the love, the passion of it. Um, just started uh, a blog because um, my housemates at the time wanted the recipes quite often, and I just thought it'd be easier to put them on there. And from there, I started to get commissions for for magazines, and um, had was so busy because I was working a full time job as well. Um, so I just started doing fifteen minute recipes myself, and thought actually I'll start putting these on the blog. Um, yeah, and then I had so many recipes, I thought I think I could make a book out of this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it went from there. So this is my full time job now so yeah just just by the love of it yeah absolute dream yeah best job in the world I love that yeah well lucky us that we get to share all your amazing recipes now I know (laughs) well that's amazing you've packed in so many tips to that short episode Katie thank you and um (laughs) thank you especially for joining us you know when you're still not feeling too great we really hope you feel better soon what can we expect next from you then what's next um after this latest book (laughs) <laughs> so I've got another book coming out in November so that's easy speedy vegan there's 100 recipes that are already in 15 20 or 30 minutes um, and then that. I've got more books out next year as well God, yeah. busy woman I love that <laughs> <laughs> well that's it from us for this week we'll be back next Thursday when Molly and I will be back together again uh, doing our news and reviews and just general vegan chit chat Um, In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this episode with a friend if you think that they'll benefit from it. You can also email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk. We love to hear from you.